Hi guys, we're live. I'm with Grappling Hearts. Today I've got Boogeyman with us. What's For up? What's up? Yeah. <laughs> Anyone who doesn't know Boogie, you're missing out. Um, Boogie's been on EBI, Polaris, Mission Underground, all sorts of bigger shows. Um, I'm willing to go out on a limb and say Boogie and his brother Geo are definitely two of Tenth Planet's most exciting black belts to watch. So we're super to have you here, Boogie. Thank you. Thank you so much. You know, um, yeah, I've been on a lot of shows and stuff, but, you know, just like everybody else, you know, just um, trying to live the jiu-jitsu dream, you know, to, trying to make it in a, in, a, in a sport that really hasn't got the respect that it, it, it deserves, I believe, you know. So, For man, sure. we're, just, we're just out there grinding like everybody else, you know. Um, you know, th thankfully, we, we've done – well with it and um you know we're, we're only reaching for for higher and higher absolutely um but the first thing i kind of want to talk to you about is before you got into grappling you did a lot of break dancing you kind of want to talk about that for a few minutes yeah yeah of course um yeah like my, my background is break dancing me and geos you know um we come we we started dancing when we were really young you know and it was just basically like the passion uh, of, 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 of uh, like our artistic passion, you know, and at the same time is even though it's artistic, it's very competitive, you know, and, um, you know, it kind of paved the way for, for, for jujitsu, you know, it, it paved the way for, for, for our competitive, like love for jujitsu, you know, um, we've already been competitors for many years, literally like 20, 20 years of, of competing and break dancing, you know, and it was, wow. um, yeah, it, it was it was something that we really had a, a, a great passion for competitive and just artistic uh, um, a, aspect of it. And, um, you know, doing that kind of gave us a, a, a fire that they could never be kind of taught to us. You know what I'm saying? Like, like, it's like one of those things that's like you can't teach heart, but you also can't teach how to be a, a good competitor. You know, that that comes yeah. From, from from years of doing it and just kind of like finding a, a a passion for it and um I feel that because of dancing it kind of gave us the the right pathway to be good competitors in jujitsu. Absolutely, that makes a lot of sense. We put it like that. What made you transition from dancing into jujitsu? You know, it, it was pretty easy. Like like um you know we've been doing it for many years and and. And, um, you know, we, we were also, like, teaching breakdancing, like, at a studio that was also oh, okay. a jiu-jitsu studio. You know, it was, it was a jiu-jitsu studio as well, which was Ten Planet Vista at the time. And um, the, the, the owner of the gym invited us to, to do um, jiu-jitsu for free, which was kind of, like, the only missing link for us because we've already, we've already were MMA fans and stuff like that, you know. So when somebody kind of gave us the... A, a free scenario like yo you guys could train for free it was something that we couldn't afford before we kind of took advantage of it and just kind of ran with it and um you know never looked back realistically like we we were always kind of like it was one of those things that we just kind of like like nothing could hold us back no more you know we have it in front of us so it's like might as well take advantage of it for sure um, you brought up the MMA fan. You fought MMA there for a little bit, didn't you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I actually fought twelve fights in MMA. Um, I lost my last two, but I won ten fights in MMA, and um, you know, it, it was it was a a really good experience for me, just because it made me it gave me the it made me a better it made me understand better, so I could eventually be able to be a good instructor for MMA fighters and whatnot, you know, and um. You know, thankfully, I, I've gotten a lot of good um, MMA fighters um, under me and stuff like that. And, um, you know, I, I feel without those experiences, I wouldn't have been able to be a good um, instructor for my MMA fighters. And, you know, some of them are very successful. And, um, you know, I, I'm very, very proud of what I've accomplished for MMA fighters and how I was able to help them. Understandable. Um, where you fought MMA, do you think that maybe where you know you've been in that situation, you've been you know have people coming at you, throwing punches, whatnot? Does that make competing at the higher level a little less? I don't want to say scary, but like intimidating because you know those guys aren't afraid to just rip stuff if they get it. Yeah. Well, realistically, like I, like for MMA, like believe it or not, I was never scared. I was never intimidated. I'm more worried about my jujitsu. And the reason why is because I, I care about it more. You know what I'm saying? Like, 
Like, I feel there's more on the line for me just because MMA what was more, like, fun. It's, like, something that I've been a fan of. So I'm like, might as well try it. You know what I'm saying? So so, so, so when it came down to, like, like competing in MMA, it's like, I wasn't really worried. I was just having fun with it. But when it comes down to jiu-jitsu, it, like, means much more to me because I, 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 that's my passion. That's my that's where my heart's at, you know? So, so being a, a MMA fighter versus being a... a a uh, jiu-jitsu fighter like man for me it's way more scary doing jiu-jitsu it's like there's a like when when it comes up to MMA if I if I take him to my world it's a wrap you know what I'm saying and when I do jiu-jitsu it's like yo we're in the same level so it's just kind of like it's like it's definitely like way harder for me you know to be in that in that aspect you know so I like hearing that um for your 10th planet and, you know, you've been break dancing. Do you feel like that where, you know, you're so used to being that flexible that that might help you excel a little bit better than others? Um, Definitely, you know, but but I, I see I see, um, you know, like flexibility and stuff as a strength, you know, like as as somebody that's like lift weights to get stronger. You know, I, I use they use that as a tool. So I use flexibility as a tool. Like I, I stretch every day, you know, like like when people is like, oh, you are naturally flexible. It's like. Dude, I used to not be flexible at all. Like, like I was, I sucked at flexibility. But with dancing, I use that as a tool. I use that as a weapon. So I did the same thing with jujitsu. You know, and my flexibility is pretty. It's a pretty st- strong uh, um, strength for me. You know, it's a strength for me. But as anything else, you know, like if I wanted to be stronger, it's like I use that as a tool. So I go and I lift weights. You know, if I want to be more flexible, you have to stretch. You have to. You have to work for those scenarios. And a lot of people feel that that the flexibility just comes. It's like, oh, I want to be flexible. It's just it's just there. You're naturally flexible. It's like, no, I, I worked I worked for my for my flexibility as somebody would work for their for their strength, you know, for, for to get muscles or whatever. So it kinda it's kinda like a like like I feel that that people think about it differently. You know what I'm saying? Like think people think that it's just naturally flexible, but realistically I worked as hard for my flexibility as I work for, for anything else in my jujitsu. Hundred percent. Like you said, people don't realize that it takes work as well. A hundred percent. Yeah. So where you're so flexible, I feel like you have definitely got one of the most remarkable rubber guards that I've seen. And even you know, my husband Joe has said the same thing. Your rubber guard is just out <laughs> of this world. Um, how long have you been developing that? And along with the rubber guard, your omoplata to the armbar transition is just it's so smooth so fluid do you like constantly you. Just drill that all the time or what yeah. Kind of yeah, 100%. Like, like you know, like, um, my rubber guard, I've been working rubber guard since I was a white belt. You know what I'm saying? Like, like it, it was something that, that we it kind of, like, caught my eye. You know, just like people, like, right now, like, a lot of people are working on leg locks. So you see these, like, like these beasts that have, like, crazy leg locks. Like, that's how I was since I was a white belt for, for, for rubber guard. You know, it just kind of, like, when something catches your eye, you just start seeing it from everywhere. You know what I'm saying? Even, even like, my, 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 my dark Japanese necktie. Dude, I've been a fan of, of boxing and Japanese neckties since I was a white belt. So it was always something that I just always practiced, you know. So it it basically becomes second nature, you know what I'm saying? So it's like when people are are, are, are worried about like, oh, rubber guard doesn't work. It's like, well, it works for me, you know what I'm saying? So it's like it's like you can never take away like a move that doesn't work for, for you. You know what I'm saying? If it doesn't work for you, it might work for somebody else. So my whole thing is about... If you if, if if you don't understand it, at least understand the defense of it. You know what I'm saying, and that's always how I push my students. But realistically, like for me, like since I was a white belt man, I've been I've been doing rubber guard, I've been doing darces, and it just I wasn't good at them then. You know what I'm saying? But with, with, with years of drilling it and years of practicing it, it just became natural, and now it's just part of what I do. Like I don't even realize it. I don't even know what full guard is anymore, man. I just it goes straight <laughs> to rubber guard. I'm like, oh shit. It's like it's like, yeah, when people go straight to like guard to control, I'm like, boop, I'm already there. You know what I'm saying? So <laughs> it's cool. You're so dangerous from there. And I've never like it's really interesting to me because I've never heard anyone compare it to being obsessed with leg walks like that. That's a really cool perspective yeah, for me. Yeah. Um and, well, you're t- you know like, like like even even people nowadays they'll, they'll still be like I don't do leg locks. I don't do leg locks. And it's like, yeah, you probably never really got into them. It just never became your passion, you know? And it's like, it's like, it's the same thing, man. You know what I'm saying? People get so obsessed with like passing guard and it's like, that's all they're about. They don't even care about anything. They're just like, 
I right? need to pass that guard. You know what I'm saying? So it's like it's the same thing, man. It's like it's like people are gonna, but there's certain things that are less popular. You know what I'm saying? Like like rubber guard. I don't feel it's the most popular thing in the world, but then you <laughs> see like like about ten guys, fifteen guys that are like monsters that there. You know what I'm saying? Like leg locks. You know what I'm saying? Like before, you only saw like ten guys doing it. Now everybody's doing it. You know what I'm saying? So it's like some stuff catches on, sometimes doesn't. You know what I'm saying? But at the end of the day, it's like. If you do it long enough, it's going to eventually work. Hopefully, right? <laughs> hopefully. <laughs> yeah, Hope hopefully. for the best. <laughs> <laughs> we're your 10th planet, and I feel like 10th planet has a very unique style. And where they got that unique style, do you think that, you know, I know you see yourself as an artist, but where they have such a unique style, do you feel like that makes you able to be more creative than you might be able to be within other affiliations? Yeah, definitely. And and that comes with Eddie Bravo, you know what I'm saying? Like he's always pushed us to just be ourselves and be creative, you know, like like for me, like like being a dancer as we were talking about earlier, like my dance crew kind of like had this style that was called abstract dancing. You know what I'm saying? It wasn't like like traditional B boys, which is break dancers, traditional B boys wouldn't call us B boys. They'd be like, those are abstract B boys. So that we're already kind of like pushed away from the from, from mainstream you know what I'm saying so it's like we always had like a creative art like it's like when somebody does like say like a backspin right we would cross yeah. our legs while we were doing backspins you know what I'm saying so it's like we always wanted to be like a little bit different not necessarily be but it's just what our mind thought you know what I'm saying our mind wanted to be already different so when, when Eddie brought when we started like training test planning Eddie Bravo was like yo you don't have to copy exactly what I'm doing be creative do your own thing have your own flavor have your own twist it kind of made it easy for us because that's what we're already doing. So it never, it was never that we tried to like stepped away from, from, from what people were doing. It was like, it's like we were already kind of doing that already. So when Eddie kind of like, yo, you guys, this is what I do. You guys could do the same thing or you guys could make it your own. It made it, it made it funner. It made it easier. I, and I don't think any other affiliation would have let us do the same thing. You know, it, it, it made it, and that's why we kind of have like our own little kind of like 10 planet freaks, you know what I'm saying? Like, like, like the freaks is just kind of like the students that me and G are kind of building, but it was basically what Eddie was telling us to do anyways. You know what I'm saying? He's like, yo, be yourself. And I was like, we're freaks. So I guess that's what we're going to do, you know? So <laughs> It definitely helps when you have a coach that pushes you to do something a little bit different because I feel like, like you said, let you be yourself and, you know, even, sure. like you said, more fun, more the more you enjoy it, the more you're going to want to do it, the more your students want, want to do it. A hundred percent, you know, and, and honestly, like, I feel that that's the reason why I got addicted. You know what I'm saying? Like, if somebody was, like, copy and paste, copy and paste every single time, like, I would have been like, well, I'm, I'm kind of bored of copying and pasting, you know? So so I, I feel that, that Eddie's like, yo, here's the paper, here's your pen. This kind of the answers, but you gotta come up with the with the with, with the with the final result. And it's like, uh, okay, cool. You know what I'm saying? Like that made it exciting. That made it more comfortable. And 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 I feel that Eddie was the perfect guy to 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 be able to teach me jujitsu. You know, I, I don't feel I would have got the same effect or the same experience if I would have trained under somebody else. Um, people always say like, well, it's you that that that, that major jujitsu. It's like, yeah, but without somebody giving me like freedom of expression or freedom of creativity i don't think i would have been where i'm at for sure and like we said it definitely helps when you have a coach that gives you that freedom and i feel like it also goes into picking a coach whose style fits yours 100 percent for sure so boogie what's your what's next for you i know it's hard with all this covid stuff going on but have you got anything in your sights you know like like, like i've been I kind of have like a like a love and hate relationship right now with what things happen and it's like I'm getting invited to all these tournaments and competitions but my training is not the same like 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 and I and I realized that when when, when I uh, when I'm out there competing like like I just competed not too long ago of course Joe was out there too and it's like I feel that the same drive doesn't apply like like it's like I, I'm there but I don't feel it's a hundred percent me like like I feel like I need the crowd I need the excitement man like like there's so many matches and so many tournaments that I'm like down and out of nowhere I just boom because the energy of the people giving me you know and I feel that that 
right now, I'm not going to give that to, to, to a competition that's inviting me. And I, I'm not going to give that to my, like, I'm not going to do that to my students or, or, or the people that follow me, the people that like watching me. It's like, if I can't give you a hundred percent me, it's like, I'm kind of like, I'm kind of like, 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 it's kind of not even giving you the full, the, the, the full show, you know what I'm saying? So it's like, for right now, I'm kind of like laying back and, um, Hopefully, like midsummer, maybe a little bit after the summer, you know, we'll be able to get to like full on trainings and be able to train with my with, with the people that I usually train with. But for the time being right now, like as much as I want to compete and as much as I love being in, like it, on, on shows, you know, what I'm saying like I can't I can't do that to myself or, or to my to the people that follow me. You know what I'm saying? Like, like. Like if I can't give you a hundred percent me, like I don't want to give you fifty percent me. You know what I'm saying? Like I've done that many times, and it kind of like bites me in the ass at the end, you know. So at the end of the day, right now, for right now, for the time being, I'm just kind of laying low, and um, you know, hopefully like midsummer, I'm able to be compete again and stuff like that. Cause I love competing, you know, like like for sure. I, that's one of my that's one of my main passions, you know, being able to compete and just you know show my art, showcase my art. But if I'm giving you half of me, like I'm not doing myself justice, you know? You know, I can respect that. And I can totally understand it. And I absolutely love what you said about the energy of the people being there because it definitely makes an impact. And unless you've been in that situation, you don't realize it. And even even if you just compete at a low level, if you go back and watch, like, Submission Undergrounds before all this happened versus now where the crowd's not there, you can course, definitely – yeah. Yeah. It, the I, energy I, so, is just low, and, and you know, like, 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 I never made an excuse, and I still told this day I won't. But you know, like, it just to to me, like, I rather, I rather, like, even for my for my opponents, man, I, I don't want to give you half of me. You know what I'm saying? I want to give you, like, whether I lose or, or win, you know, I want to give you a full boogie. You know what I'm saying? Like, like, I feel it's not fair to, like, like, and eventually, you know, you start losing enough, and it's like you stop getting invited to these events. You know, so it's like I can't. I can't, I can't be able to, I don't want to do that to myself, to the, the competitions that are, that are putting these shows, you know what I'm saying? Like, it's like, it's like there's certain people that do compete really well with, with, um, with, with no crowd, you know, and, and, and I love watching it, you know what I'm saying? Like, there's nothing else to watch. I, I'm one that's right. like a big fan of it, you know what I'm saying? Like, I'm like, give me anything, you know what I'm saying? But it's <laughs> like, there's some people like me that grew up dancing in front of like hundreds of people and it's like that's what I'm used to that's where I shine the best you know under pressure when everybody's watching you're like I gotta pull it out of somewhere you know what I'm saying so it's like that that's that's me that's how I compete best you know what I'm saying and that's what I've been doing since I was a kid you know like competing in big crowds was like you have to do well or else you're gonna lose you know what I'm saying so it's like that's where I shine the most so so for, for me right now at the time like I said man like like I'm gonna keep it like kind of like low-key Till, till I'm able to do that, but I, I'm trying to train as much as I can right now, and I'm trying to, you know, saying like, like push my guys, you know, because there's some guys of, of mine, some students that that do want to compete in these circumstances, but at the end of the day, it's like all I could do is just be there for them and help them out as much as I can, and hopefully they do well in these circumstances, you know, what I'm saying, and I'm, right. you know, I, I'll still be the guy that's like watching at home and being a fan, because. Like I said, man, we ain't got nothing else to do right now. You know, there's UFC happening and submission undergrounds and and, and a fight to win right now. And, and you know, uh, even Jits Kings is doing a tournament right now, so, um, you know, third coast. And I'm like, yep. I'm a fan. Keep on doing these shows. And um, as soon as there's a crowd, you know, you'll see me on these shows as well. So Awesome. Um, Do you have any overall goals for jiu-jitsu and your school or your students? Yeah, yeah, of course. Like, you know, like, like for me, like the main thing is like, like I never stop having goals, you know, like, like as, 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 as soon as I finish a goal or as soon as I accomplish a goal, I'm ready for the next goal. You know, I already create a goal right there in my head. And like, I feel that that's what keeps me going, you know what I'm saying? Having like goals. It's important. And, yeah, it's so important, man. Like, like, and it's like, like I always look to myself to accomplish my goals, you know what I'm saying? And it's like, that's how you, that's how you get better at life, you know what I'm saying? Accomplishing your goals and making better ones and then accomplish your goals, you know what I'm saying? Keep on building, keep on building on top of your goals. And um, yeah, for, for me, like the biggest goal right now is to be able to create a, a not even create, like, like being able to help my students accomplish the same goals that I have, you know what I'm saying? Like making them get to the big shows, you know what I'm saying? Like, like being able to, 
to have the same opportunities that I have. And, um, you know, maybe hopefully like they could create schools as well. You know, like that's always kind of been my goals at the end, you know, because realistically, like, it's like, I feel I've accomplished a lot and I still have a lot more to accomplish competitive wise and stuff like that. But at the end of the day, it's like, if I can't help my students create goals like I did, then, you know, as a coach, like you really feel like, like you haven't done much, you know? And it's like, it's like, I know that not everybody wants to be a world champion, but I still want to get them to the level that they're able to compete if they wanted to at that level. And, um, you know, and, and be good instructors and so on and so on. And, um, you know, realistically, that's my biggest goal right now, you know, like creating an opportunity for my students to be able to have the same things that I've gotten. Oh yeah. It's a really good goal, especially to hear instructors say that it's really admirable. So, bravo. <laughs> thank you, thank you. <laughs> so, man, Eddie's got this uh, new uh, type of EBI coming out, the overtime stuff. Yeah, what do you think yeah, about yeah. that? Let's talk about that a little bit. Yeah, yeah. Like, like I think it's fun. I, I, and I think that's what it is. It's, it's fun. Like, exciting. it's kind of like, like, I would say, like, you know, basketball, right? Like, I, I don't really watch for I don't really watch basketball, but it, it's, a, it's a good way to kind of, like, like, for you to understand what I'm talking about. It's like basically like a, a, a basketball game, like full basketball game. It's fun. People watch it. It's, it's super fat popular. But then you have the slam dunk contest. You know what I'm saying? Like I feel that this is kind of like a slam dunk contest. You know what I'm saying? Like it's like it's like it's fun and it, there's a skill to it. You know what I'm saying? But it's like yeah. not everybody's going to be good at it and not, it's not going to be everybody's niche. But when you watch it, you're like, oh, man, it's kind of fun. You know what I'm saying? It's something to watch. It's something interesting. And it's something new, you know what I'm saying, for, for, for people to become fans of certain people. It's like, oh, man, don't let this guy get your back because I've seen him on, on the overtime rounds. Man, he, he's a beast. So if he takes your back or takes the arm, he's fucking you up. So it kind of gives you kind of like a like, – like you start seeing people differently like, oh, man, like can't get that – that guy can't get my back because he's the EBI overtime champion, you know what I'm saying? Like so, so it kind of like – it makes you kind of worry, you know what I'm saying? Kind of like interesting. And it kind of like makes people new superstars, you know what I'm saying? There's going to be people that are going to be like, you know, it's going to be on USC Five Pass and people are going to watch it. So, you know, people are going to create like, you know what I'm saying? You're going to, you're going to create new, new superstars, you know what I'm saying? And I feel that that makes it fun. You know, I have, you, of course I have Keith, you know, Keith Kikorian. He's one of my Absolutely. students. Absolutely. Love and, Keith. And right now, yeah, he's awesome, man. Awesome kid. And, um, you know, he's actually been my student since he was 15 years old, you know? So really? Now, yeah, 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 yeah. Shoot. So now, yeah, he's, he's a beast, man. And, and I, love, I love him to death. And, but now he's, he's doing the, the overtime. And I'm like, man, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, you start seeing this kid that was, like, like 15 training at my gym. And now he's, like, doing these, like, super big tournaments on UFC Fight Pass. It's like, that's what kind of, like, gets me going. These are the kind of goals that I created for myself, and now I get to see it. But, man, he's going to be a superstar, you know what I'm saying? Like, like, especially if he does very well in this or maybe, like, does okay and, like, gets invited to, like, different tournaments because of this, you know what I'm saying? So it's like these are the kind of things that I want to see. So it makes it fun for me as a coach. But I also – I'm a big fan of jiu-jitsu. So when I see, like, new tournaments and new concepts like this – it makes it fun for me, you know, like, I'm like, oh, man, maybe one of these days I'll jump in there, you know what I'm saying, and, like, do some EBI overtime, like, um, uh, um, shootouts and stuff like that, so, you know, at the end of the day, it's like, as a fan, I, I love it, you know what I'm saying, it's an instructor, it gives my students new opportunities, so I, I, I love it, you know what I'm saying, so I know that people are kind of, like, torn about it, and like, oh, I don't really like it, it should, and it's fine, you know what I'm saying, it's not going to be for everybody, you know what I'm saying, like, like, EBI overtime is not for everybody. You know what I'm saying? Right. Like, IBJJF is not for everybody. You know what I'm saying? Like submission, submission only is not for everybody. Shit, no gi and gi is not for everybody. You know, so at the end of the day, it's like people are gonna love what they love. But for me, as a jujitsu fan, I like it. I, I enjoy it, and I'm gonna definitely be front row watching. And I'm gonna be there coaching anyway. So you know what I'm saying? So I'll definitely be there front row. So and, and like I said, man, like like more opportunities like this, it, it makes it makes it fun because not everybody's going to be a world champion at, at IB to death. Not everybody's going to be an EBI world champion, but yo, you may be a, a overtime um, um, EBI champion. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, you know, you give people opportunities. That's cool. And you know, I really love it when you put it like that, especially when you brought up about making others worried if they get, if that <laughs> one person gets to their back. Cause you know what? I never even thought of that. And you know, that would be a threat seeing somebody For who sure. just won a tournament that's solely based on and he's like, oh, 
Well, here we go. It makes you think about it, right? You're like, you start thinking twice. You're like, oh, man. <laughs> For sure. So one thing I've noticed is that when new stuff, or, or rather new tournaments like this comes out, because, you know, Eddie came up with EBI, and then, if I'm not mistaken, Eddie and Seth Daniels worked on um, sub Subvert. I'm not even going to be able to pronounce Subversive. it. Subversive. Yes. Subversive. Yes. Yes, that, and then now this. So do you feel like if there's always something new coming out in jiu-jitsu, it's 98% of the time got Eddie involved? Right? No, man, <laughs> um, Eddie, <laughs> that's a good question. Eddie's such an innovator, you know what I'm saying? Like, like he has a, a, a creative mind, and um, I feel that, that you know, some of the stuff's not going to be as popular as others, you know what I'm saying? And it's like, and, and I feel that he... He he hits the mark most of the time. You know what I'm saying? Like like he makes right. it. He, he hits the mark most of the time. And um, you know, anywhere from tense planet jujitsu to 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 EBI to combat jujitsu, um, subversive. He's done very well. He's done very well. Hey. He's had some great ideas. And um, man, I I don't see him slowing down either with ideas. Man, I feel I feel that they they. they 99% of the time, he's going to be the one that's going to create something new and different. And, um, you know, I think it's going to hit every time. I, I hope it does, you know what I'm saying? Because, you know, like, like whether you're, you're a 10th planet guy or not, it's like, yo, like every time something new comes up, it gives you a new opportunity. And that, that's what I've been talking about, just opportunity and chance to being able to be a superstar, you know what I'm saying? Because nobody is doing jiu-jitsu to be second best, you know what I'm saying? So sure. it's like... You may be the be the best guy in this platform, but you're on this platform. I'm gonna be the best, you know. And it's like, like for me, like man, I came kind of gives it it gives it like that. Like for me, like I came up short in EBI. I I got I, I made it to the finals and I came up short. I, then I made it to top eight. Then I made it to top four. You know what I'm saying? Like 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 I've done well in EBI. I just haven't Absolutely. got I haven't got the gold. You know what I'm saying? Like it's been hard, and it's like. You know what I'm saying? I wasn't a good wrestler there. Maybe my cardio wasn't up to Like, there's different reasons why I didn't. You know what I'm saying? Like, and it is what it is. You know what I'm saying? And and, and then when, when combat jujitsu came around, it's like I took it to uh, myself. I'm like, got to give it a chance. You know what I'm saying? Like, this may be where I shine. You know, I've done MMA. I've, I, I've done jujitsu tournaments. I've done well in both. I'm like, well, what about a combination of both? And, you know, thankfully, I was successful, you know, and I was able to get a, a, a belt, Um, you know what I'm saying, and, 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 and twice, you know, and it's like, at the end of the day, it's like it gave me the opportunity. So, like, when I see things like this, man, it's like there's another superstar about to be born, you know? And it's like I see that every time. I'm like, there's a new chance. There's a new chance. And it may not be for me, but it may be for my students or for people around me, you know? That's awesome. And I really feel like that goes back into giving back to the community is, you know, like, Eddie's giving people those chances. And also as instructors, you're giving your students chances to build themselves up to be that superstar. So I really sure. love that about you all. Boogie, I think that's about our interview, sir. I really appreciate you oh, coming man. on here. That was fun. I'm glad you had fun. fun. questions. Yeah, I enjoyed it. I enjoyed <laughs> it for sure. <laughs> I appreciate you saying that, sir. It means a lot. Not for sure. And, man, I hope, I hope you guys get a lot of success. I know you guys are fairly new, right, like like, like, like your podcast. Man, anytime you need anything, please let me know. And, um, you know, I hope you guys have a, a lot of success with it. And, of course, um, you know what I'm saying, like, Nice guys, love you guys to death. You and your team, man. You guys have always been family to me. Real good to except, me. Uh, except Bobby, fuck Bobby, right? You darsed him again. Yes, I will. Yeah, fuck Bobby. Nah. You darsed you know, him like, again, right? I'll I'll do my best to do it. Yes, yeah, I might switch it up on him. So that was for <laughs> no, but that man, was for you, him. Guys, you guys have always been so good to me, man. Like like whether we compete against each other or whether we're just hanging out. Like, you and your team has been, like, family to me, man. You guys are awesome. And, you know, much love for you guys. And I hope you guys are doing great out there. Um, and, um, you know, anything you guys ever need, I'm here for you guys. And, um, yeah, much love and support to you and your podcast and for your team as well. And I appreciate that, Boogie, especially coming from you. You were actually the first gym I got to go to cross-train at. So that was a – And that was super fun, wasn't it? And, like, it was. I loved it. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> so, man, Hopefully I appreciate you coming all on. this craziness – Hopefully, after all this craziness, you guys get to come back and train with me again. So We love that. I appreciate you coming on, Boogie. You take care, sir. Anytime. Thank you, guys. Appreciate Absolutely. it. Absolutely.